What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu. You are watching the Rage Nation Show Transformers 4 Edition. This is just a web series where we're talking about all things that matter before me for production of the fourth installment of the live action Transformers film franchise directed by Michael Bay. This update number 116. Before we begin with the news, I just want to follow up on something that I talked about in my previous video, update number 115, where I was talking about the Takara exclusives for the larger scale Optimus Prime toys. That would be the leader class toys. And and I showed you all the different uh, Takara versions of the Optimus Prime toys. And let's just recap, okay? So first we got uh, the first edition from Hasbro. And then we got the premium edition or premier edition, I'm not sure, from Takara uh, of Optimus Prime. Which is essentially the same thing, okay? The only difference is the packaging, which really just consists of the sticker label. <laughs> so... There's no physical differences on the toy, okay? Next, we have this really neat new Optimus Prime that we've never seen before, and that is the LA01 Optimus Prime, which means Lost Age 01, and that would be the Battle Command Optimus Prime, which is an entirely new mold that we've never seen before. It comes with a jetpack, and the jetpack transforms into his trailer. And what's really cool is that I really like this version because of the detail on his upper body. It just looks a lot better than the first edition. And to top things off, he's got that jetpack. But what's very interesting is that um, he, he's got a lot of back kibble all on his hips and all on his legs. So all the back kibble that we saw in the first edition Optimus Prime, where it's all on his back, all of the back cable on the Battle Command Optimus Prime went to his hips and his legs, or rather behind his legs. And I think the main reason why they did that was because, well, if it's got to carry that giant back backpack, that jetpack, you know, they need to balance out uh, the weight. So that's probably why they put all the back cable on the hips and behind the legs. But anyways, that so far is my favorite version of the Optimus Prime toys. But what I really wanted to talk about is that I want to correct myself uh, with one of the, uh, the the identities of one of these toys. And that is, I originally thought that this Optimus Prime was a first edition mold of Optimus Prime. It's not. It's actually the leader class mold. Now, originally I thought that simply because all that silver kind of threw me off. I thought it was uh, the first edition Optimus Prime. It's not. A lot of the, the, the fans and the viewers have corrected me. So thank you for bringing that up to me. That's my bad. I made a mistake. It was an honest mistake. And I want to acknowledge that uh, you guys are correct about that. And I was wrong. And what we see here is actually Takara's very own version of the leader class Optimus Prime. Hasbro has their own version. Uh, which is uh, okay looking. It's, it's actually not that great simply because I don't like the light gray parts. They look very cheap, very plasticky. All right, but this version, they did a little bit more silver painting on them. They obviously removed the chrome because the chrome just doesn't work. All right, but they replaced it with silver paint, which looks better. Okay, now there's a little bit too much silver on the chest uh, so that you only have a couple of blue and red panels. But um, I still think it looks definitely a lot better than the first edition Optimus Prime. It looks better than the Hasbro version of the leader class. So this is Takara's leader class Optimus Prime. And uh, it's a representation of the Silver Knight Optimus Prime, obviously, because there's a lot of silver on him. But I'm going to have to say that I like the, um, the Battle Command Optimus Prime LA01 the most from Takara. And uh, I'm curious to see what it really looks like once we get the official photos from Takara. So I just wanted to talk about that. Now with regards to uh, merchandising and marketing, let's just start with talking about marketing. And Hasbro and Paramount have released the official character photos for the main cast, we've been waiting for this for a very, very, very long time. And finally, they put out the photos of each character. They put out the Autobots, the Decepticons, and of course, the Dinobots that we're going to see in the movie. So let's just start off with the Autobots. And we've already seen Autobots. Let's start off with uh, Crosshairs. And here he is. And you can see that his, his, his hips have the flowing 
cape or trench coat rather he's got the goggles and he's reaching out and so far i'm still gonna say that he is my favorite out of all the autobots just uh from his, the way he looks and also i love his alt mode okay so he's supposed to be the uh, stingray corvette next we have the 2014 camaro bumblebee with his battle mask on and this is pretty cool i'm curious to see what the official uh, a robot uh, um, character image of for the 1967 version but so far we got the 2014 version right here now here's Optimus Prime with his new armor this is obviously not the uh, the 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 Marmon truck this is the new Western Star version and he's carrying the sword and uh, he's obviously got that whole samurai look thing going on so this would probably be his silver knight mode look here's hound okay now what's very interesting about hounds robot mode in this particular image is that he has the look of bulkhead but in the toy he doesn't have the look of the you know the bulkhead look the 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 the, the, whole, the body shape of, of of bulkhead but according to this uh this image here he does have that rounded off look so um that's that's going to be kind of uh, weird. So I'm just curious, is this his final look for the film? Because his toy doesn't look like that at all. His toy makes him look like he's just a very muscular looking Autobot, but not a chubby Autobot. So who knows? Maybe the toy is actually different from the, 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 the movie version itself. So that's just an observation. Now, here's Drift. Full on samurai look. Look at that. Like he's a full on samurai. But he still looks good. His samurai armor really throws me off because, like, he literally is a king-sized robot samurai complete with the shoulder guards and the thigh guards and a samurai helmet. <laughs> How are they going to explain that? All right, now let's take a look at the Decepticons. These are the bad guys. Let's start off with um, Galvatron. And Galvatron uh, really looks um, very different from Megatron. Galvatron, I feel, is going to be like his own robot he's I, I don't feel he's gonna be like a, uh, a like a, a version of Megatron uh, the only thing that really makes us feel that he's related to Megatron in any way is just the fact that he's completely all silver or gray so which was Megatron's color so there you have it now here is Stinger and Stinger if you put him side to side with Bumblebee these guys are brothers these guys are twins there's some relationship going on there. These guys are definitely connected to each other, especially from what the trailer suggests. These guys are connected. So I'm curious how they're going to explain this. Now, finally, here is Lockdown. And Lockdown is the most interesting out of all the Decepticons because he is a, he's a bounty hunter. And I like his look simply because he's got a face. And one side of his face is kind of, um, looks like battle damage. As you can see, there's more texture on one side of his face. The other side's more clean. But I'm curious to know his role, like what his role in the movie is going to be like. I think he's going to get a lot of screen time. Just because, based on what I've read about his synopsis, he is going to be a very interesting character. All right? Now, here are the Dinobots in their Dinobot modes. And let's first take a look at Dinobot Slug, who is uh, essentially Slag, but they changed his name to Slug because Slag means something bad in the UK. Anyways, he looks great. Look how vicious he looks. He's got the tail of a Stegosaurus. Another thing is that he's got more horns than your typical Triceratops because he's got horns on his chin. So essentially he's got five horns on his face alone and then he's got horns on the side of his face and he's got horns on his tail and then he's got horns on his back this guy is a very dangerous dinobot and i really like the way he looks as a dinobot now here is grimlock we've seen a plenty of photos of grimlock so we don't need to talk about him uh, let's take a look at slash now slash is a very um uh interesting looking dinobot because he will most likely be the smallest of them all uh, I, I think they're calling him Slash because he's got a lot of blades on his arms. Like, he can do some damage just with his forearms alone. And then here is a Strafe. Now, Strafe is a two-headed Pteranodon, which is a, is a very creative take on a, on a Dinobot. 
uh, if you look inside his mouth, he's got his cannon ready to go. Uh, it's it's most likely he's probably gonna shoot out of his out of his his mouth because uh, I don't see any guns on him. And finally, my favorite Dinobot is Scorn, just because look at this. I mean, this guy's just dangerous. He looks he looks like like vicious. <laughs> He looks very mean. He even looks more mean than 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 Grimlock. Grimlock is a T Rex. Scorn is a um. He, he's a he's a, 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 a what do you call that guy? Uh, uh, um. Oh man, what is he called again? Uh, Spinosaurus. Cause look at those sails, man. They're pointy as hell. And also, I really like the toys. I, I mean, the toy of of Scorn. He's actually my favorite out of all the the Dinobots as a toy. Uh, so very cool. Anyway, so that's what uh, that's what we got to talk about with regards to marketing. Now let's talk about um, something that uh, is very very interesting because Entertainment Weekly did uh, um, an interview and a bit of a, a like a like a spread on on Transformers: Age of Extinction, and it looks like uh, trans it appears that Transformers Four sets up is the beginning of a trilogy. Actually, there's going to be a Transformers. Five and six, like we already knew, they're gonna make more and more movies, but they're officially calling this the beginning of a trilogy. So there is gonna be Transformers Five, there is gonna be Transformers Six. It appears that they're gonna be three years apart from each other. So Transformers Five coming in 2017, Transformers Six coming in in uh, um uh, uh 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 I'm terrible with math. Uh, 2020. Holy cow, 2020. So this is the beginning of a trilogy, and obviously, with it beginning becoming the beginning of a trilogy, Transformers: Age of Extinction sets it up for an, a new, you know, like a, a like a bunch of new films. And uh, Michael Bay isn't sure if he's gonna direct the next films. He said he wasn't sure. Okay, that does doesn't rule out the fact that he's gonna do it. Okay, he could still possibly be the one that's gonna be directing it. But I personally think that he's not going to do it, okay? That's just me, all right? But uh, it's possible that he's coming back. Uh, what's really interesting is that the photo that they used for this, this spread is Grimlock. And it looks like he's breathing fire. He's breathing fire in this, in this image of, of, of Grimlock. And Grimlock in G1, he actually shot fire out of his, uh, out of his mouth. So this is definitely a nod to G1, but what I'm curious about is that, is this fire really going to be that effective? <laughs> I mean, sure, I understand it's his weapon system, which is also his weapon system in G1, excuse me, G1, but is it really going to be that effective against Decepticons? We're talking about fire on metal, unless it's really, really, really hot, or it's some kind of Cybertronian fire. So um, that's really interesting, and it's really cool that they decided to make him breathe fire. Now, what's the most interesting is that they decided to talk about um, lockdown, okay? Uh, there's a lot of details on lockdown. Uh, uh, there's, um, it really suggests that he is the main villain of, of Transformers Age of Extinction. He's a bounty hunter. And it sounds like that there's going to be a lot of mystery about his character. There's definitely going to be a lot more that uh, is probably not going to be explained in the movie, but uh, it leaves a lot for the new movies, Transformers 5 and 6, and it also uh, makes us wonder about his origins, all right? Keyword being origins, I'm not going to say too much more other than that, but uh, it could mean that his, his character is related to something bigger! And who is the biggest... Transformer out there. I'm not going to say anything. Anyways, uh, that's all I got to say about lockdown. Now, one thing I got to mention about this article is that um, it's something I, I, I want to read to you guys, okay? It, it's just something that I got to point out because a lot of people like to call me out on this, but I'm just going to read this here and maybe I can uh, shut you guys up about this for those that choose to, to challenge me all the time. Don't call it Transformers 4. Not unless you want to be stomped on by one of Michael Bay's big metal friends. The bombastic filmmakers, filmmaker bristles at the numeric moniker and considers Transformers Age of Extinction not a sequel, but a reboot of the shape-shifting alien robot series. 
It's kind of like a new Transformers base says. We've we had three, the first trilogy, and this is going to be the next one, the next trilogy. Yeah, it's the first of a new trilogy. He says after a moment of hesitation, I'm not necessarily sure that I'm doing the others, but that's what it's meant for. Keywords being new trilogy, and the other keyword is being reboot, and the other three keywords is is a uh, not a sequel. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Mark Wahlberg called it a reboot. Michael Bay says they're not rebooting the franchise, but it is a reboot. Okay? I've been calling it a reboot since 2011. All right? And a lot of people choose to, to challenge me and say that it's not a reboot. Okay? I'm going to just stop talking right there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think, the, I think the, uh, the, 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 the conversation is over about that. So let's talk about uh, reshoots. Reshoots happened in LA recently with Mark Wahlberg and Optimus Prime in his Western Star uh, truck mode. But uh, not much more has been said about that. All that took place was Mark Wahlberg in Optimus Prime driving. And that's about it. Uh, I don't know what took place there, but it happened in LA and apparently it's all over. It wasn't an action sequence. You didn't see any of the other cars and maybe it's just a few minor scenes here and there, but that's what took place. Okay. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about is Grimlock and uh, Hasbro has updated their photos of Grimlock. Uh, we've seen uh, photos of Grimlock from Toy Fair. This is what he looked like before. All right, so, you know, he looks all right. Now here is the new accurate version of Grimlock. You can obviously see there's more silver on him, more chrome, especially on the head of the, the Dinobot, I mean, of Grimlock himself, and also his whole full torso. They changed that from orange to chrome. <laughs> wow, that was like, just like a whole 360. Okay, now TFW2005.com member uh, Ch uh, Cherix or CH Eric S has posted photos. I'd like to say thank you, Cherix, for posting these photos. And what we can see here is a comparison in size between the leader class Grimlock and a leader class Optimus Prime. Grimlock is shorter. And I'm thinking, blasphemy. Are you serious? They made Grimlock shorter than Optimus Prime? Now here's Grimlock by himself. Man, that silver chrome is just blinged out, like full on. Even on his legs, like look at that. <laughs> here's a closer look. Uh, I like the mold. I gotta say that I like the mold. I like the sculpt of him, but the, the, the paint apps and the, the choice of chrome is just a little bit too much. Now here he is beside Voyager class Optimus Prime in the, the G1 truck mode, the flat nose. And, uh, you know, that's a decent size. That's more in scale. That looks way more scale accurate, all right? Now, here's his uh, vehicle, or rather, his beast mode. And, holy, that chrome is just all over the top part and the back of his, you know, his upper back. And uh, here he is compared with, uh, with the Voyager class uh, Grimlock. And um, I can't say which one is better. I like the, the sculpting, like the actual mold itself. But that chrome is too much. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, I'm going to take a closer look at him when I have him in hand, when I'm at Toys R Us holding him, and I'm going to make a decision. But right now, um, I might have to wait for that Takara Black Knight Grimlock to see which one I'm really going to get. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this video. There was a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, a lot of controversial stuff, especially in terms of the story and Lockdown's character. You know, there's a lot of mystery surrounding his character, but I think it's going to to be a great addition to making this story very unique compared to the other three films. So I'm really happy to hear, to know about that. Anyways, what do you think about Grimlock breathing fire? Is that something that you think will... Uh, be uh, a really cool nod to G1 or do you think that you'd rather see Grimlock just tear Decepticons apart and Vehicons apart with just his claws alone? That's what I kind of want to see. I mean these guys are supposed to be Dinobots like they're archaic beasts from prehistoric times, all right? They're supposed to be brutal and, and um, you know maybe I'm just not a big fan of the whole fire breathing thing but 
Apparently that's what dragons do and dragons is the inspiration for all these dinobots. Anyways, that's all I gotta say in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Raging Nation. Check out my photos on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Peace. It's gonna be as close to what we're gonna get for being screen accurate. So I'm really excited about, I'm really anticipating what it's gonna look like. So hopefully 